Hi everyone, my name is Jonathan Zabalaga and I am a PhD student at the Technical University of Munich. Today, I'll be presenting our work on post following with dual quaternions. This is a joint project with my supervisor, Professor Marcus Rill. Our motivation comes from simultaneous position and attitude control. Given a rigid body and a geometric reference parameterized by a variable, theta in this case, we aim to design a control method that not only converges in position, but also in orientation. The simplest approach to address the post control problem is decoupling it into two separate subproblems. On the one hand, a position controller drives the translational motions, and on the other hand, an attitude controller regulates the rotational behavior. This separation relates to the de facto representation of the rigid body dynamics, in which the translational and angular motions are expressed separately. However, such partitioning poses a challenge to effectively control the interdependence between the rotational and translational dynamics. An alternative to this decoupling is representing the system dynamics globally on the configuration manifold of the special Euclidean group SE3. Doing so, allows for leveraging the group structure to first of all avoid singularities and second design proportional derivative pd feedback post controllers such control methods have shown very promising results within a wide range of applications despite these achievements even the controllers designed within sc3 have their own limitations let's look into these limitations to represent the pose of a rigid body in SE3, it is customary to combine a three-dimensional vector of the Cartesian coordinates with either a rotation matrix or a unit quaternion. Starting with the rotation matrix, one of its drawbacks is that it is not a compact representation since it is given by a 3x3 three three matrix, resulting in a total of nine parameters. An alternative solution is to use unit quaternions which only rely on four values. Other than that, with such representations, the computation of rotation and position is performed independently, making it more difficult and inefficient to operate with poses. When it comes to control design, there are two shortcomings that are worth highlighting. First, both the rotation matrices and unit quaternions contain multiple equilibrium points. Second, rather than having a single pose error function, rotation matrices and unit quaternions require two separate functions, one for the position error and another one for the attitude error. To overcome these limitations, we propose to use a less popular yet full of potential SE3 parameterization, unit dual quaternions. A dual quaternion consists of a standard quaternion whose components are given by dual numbers. For a dual quaternion to be unit, its inverse needs to be equal to the conjugate. Just as unit quaternions represent rotations, unit dual quaternions describe three-dimensional transformations. In other words, translations as well as rotations. More specifically, a unit dual quaternion consisting of a translation vector P and a rotation quaternion Q corresponds to a screw motion and is given by the equation highlighted in yellow. Due to the time constraints of this presentation, I will not provide further details on formally defining this screw motion. If you are interested in this, please check the paper. When compared to more conventional post representations, unit dual quaternions overcome most of the aforementioned limitations. First of all, their parameterization is compact since it only relies on eight parameters. Second, their utilization is simple and efficient because a series of rigid movements and can be expressed as a sequence of dual quaternion multiplication. Third, due to their quaternion-based nature, unit dual quaternions inherit the double coverage of SO3 and thus have two equilibrium points. Last but not least, unit dual quaternions allow to represent the pose error with a single function. Due to these appealing properties, unit dual quaternions have received considerable attention in the literature. Despite this recent race in interest, the majority of the existing methods exclusively focus on reference tracking. To properly emphasize the limitation of tracking, let's take a tangent and clearly state the differences between tracking and following. In path tracking, the desired state evolves with time and is agnostic to the system's state. This might lead to an undesired system performance. To understand this, let's focus on the following illustrative example. Let's assume that the dynamical system, shown in red, is accurately tracking a desired state depicted in blue. This desired state depends on time and moves along the black geometric reference. 
If at any point an external disturbance hinders the progress of the system, the time-based reference will keep moving while the dynamical system remains stuck. Once the disturbance disappears, it will try to catch up, resulting in an increased tracking error. In literature, this is commonly summarized as a method that imposes when to be where. In response to this undesired behavior, path following does not rely on a predefined reference but leverages the progress along the path as an additional degree of freedom. More intuitively, in the previous illustrative example, when the dynamical system gets blocked by the external disturbance, the desired state is dependent on the progress along the path and therefore does not keep moving forward. As a consequence, once the system is set free, the dynamical system proceeds to follow the path without any deviations. Having clarified the benefits of path following, let's get back to the previous slide. As mentioned before, the appealing attributes associated to unit to quaternions have caused an increased popularity as a post parameterization for designing control methods. However, the existing literature limits their applicability to reference tracking scenarios. Therefore, following the explanations in the previous slide, we suggest to formulate a unit dual quaternion based post following method, allowing us to overcome the fundamental limitations of tracking. The analysis conducted in this slide brings us to the research question that we are trying to answer in this work. The question says as follows How can we formulate a post following control method based on unit dual quaternions? This question naturally extends the concept of path following to post following. In the upcoming two slides, we will reformulate this question into two different problems. Before doing so, there are some preliminaries that need to be covered. First, we consider that the system dynamics are given by the standard three-dimensional rigid body equations of motion. Second, we define the geometric reference denoted by gamma as a path with a moving frame attached to it. Both the Cartesian coordinates and the moving frame are given by two functions parameterized by theta. Third, we define the augmented rigid body dynamics. For this purpose, we augment the system states by the parametric variable of theta and its first derivative. In a similar way, the parametric variable's acceleration is added to the nominal control commands. Fourth, we define the post following error by a yet to be defined function that outputs the deviation between the rigid body rigid body's pose and the desired pose. Due to the structure of SC3, this function is dependent on the control design approach and thus will be defined in the upcoming slides. Having settled the preliminaries, let's move on to the formal definition of the problems that we solve in this work. First, we define the pose following problem. Given the geometric reference gamma in 2 and the augmented rigid body dynamics in 1, Formulate a controller that fulfills post convergence and convergence on parametric variable. The former ensure, ensures that the post error vanishes asymptotically, while the latter guarantees that the system reaches the end of the geometric reference. Second, we extend the first problem to post following with velocity assignment. The key distinction is that it replaces the convergence on parametric variable with velocity convergence. The aim of this modification is to make the parametric speed converge to a predetermined velocity profile. To solve these problems and ultimately answer the previously stated research question, our contributions are threefold. First, we extend the unit dual quaternion based ODEs from post tracking to post following. Second, we derive a unit dual quaternion based post following control framework that can be tailored either to ensure convergence to a desired velocity profile or to incite a desired behavior around the reference. Third, we prove almost global asymptotic stability for the previously stated control law. Now we will proceed to look into each contribution more in detail. In the first contribution, we derive the error dynamics required for unit dual quaternion based post following. We start by converting the augmented system dynamics in one to a dual quaternion representation. To do so, we derivate the dual quaternion's definition on time. Besides obtaining the dual quaternion's equation of motion, we also get the dual twist. To derive its equation of motion, we combine it with the augmented rigid body dynamics in one and differentiate it with respect to time. The resulting equation can be rearranged into two variables, f for the terms that rely solely on the states and u for the terms that rely solely on the inputs. In a similar way, 
we can represent the parametric geometric reference in two with unit dual quaternions. Despite having successfully transformed the rigid biodynamics and the geometric reference from the standard post representation to the dual quaternion representation, in order to design the control law, we are interested in the error dynamics. For this purpose, we define the dual quaternion error by the formula within the red box. Combining it with the unit dual quaternion based system dynamics and the geometric reference, after some derivation, we finally get to the dual quaternion based error dynamics. Dynamics. When compared to the tracking counterpart, additional terms arise. As we will see in the following slide, these differences will play a significant role in the design of the control. Before formulating the control law, we need to take a step back and bring up the definition of post convergence. This is equivalent to ensuring that the dual quaternion error converges to the equilibrium points of the error dynamics. Taking this into account, we proceed to formulate a control law that regulates the stable equilibrium point. To do so, we decouple the control law into a feedforward and a feedback term. The goal of the term is to cancel feedback nonlinearities. When doing so, it is apparent that the first and the last term can readily be cancelled out. However, this is not true for the third term, which is multiplied by a virtual input. To account for this, we choose the virtual input to be feedback dependent, allowing us to also get rid of, the, uh, of it with the feedforward component. Regarding the feedback term, we leverage the logarithmic mapping associated to the Lie group of unit quaternions to design a proportional derivative PD feedback. Notice that the lambda term is a switching term that guarantees convergence to a stable equilibrium point. Putting both the feedback and feedforward terms together, we obtain the control law used in this work. Notice that the feedback term introduced in the feedforward component, the one highlighted in yellow, still needs to be defined. To do so, we proceed to the third contribution where we lay out the conditions to ensure stability. The stability guarantees are given by two different theorems, each of them being associated to the two problems formulated earlier. For the sake of time, we will only state the theorems. If you are interested in the proofs, please check the paper. The theorem tackling the first problem says as follows. Consider the augmented rigid body dynamics in one, the geometric reference in two, the control law in four, with the feed forward and feedback terms in 4.1 and 4.2. And assume that the following conditions are satisfied. First, the dual quaternion control gains are chosen to be positive and the dual components of KP equal to each other. Second, the post-parameter control law ensures that the velocity of the post-parameter is positive. Then, the closed-loop control scheme defined by system 2 and control law 4 solves the post-following problem. That is the first theorem. Let's move on to the second one. The theorem ensuring stability for the post-following with velocity assignment problem is the same as the first one except for the second condition. In this case, the feedback term is required to have the form of the equation highlighted in yellow. This will ensure that the parametric variable's speed will converge to the desired velocity profile. To evaluate our approach, we conduct two simulated experiments. In the first experiment, we validate the second theorem. For this purpose, we analyze the post and parametric speed convergence for different initial states and velocity profiles. The obtained trajectories are depicted in the four figures at the upper right side of the slide. The black thick line with the moving frame refers to the geometric reference. The, the rest of the colored lines are the trajectories obtained when initializing from different states. Each starting point is evaluated according to two different constant velocity profiles. The motions associated with the fast profiles are depicted by a continuous line, while the motions related to the slope profiles are given by the dashed lines. These motions manifest two noteworthy characteristics. The first one being that all of them demonstrate asymptotic convergence towards the geometric reference. The second characteristic, which aligns with the common intuition, is that motions corresponding to slower velocity profiles attain convergence at an earlier stage. To further observe the convergence of the velocity profile, we can take a closer look into the starting point circled in red. The figure at the lower part shows that for three different cases, the parametric speed, depicted by the, the continuous line, 
converges to the desired velocity profile represented by the dashed line. In the second experiment, we compared the performance of the proposed post-following approach against post-tracking. To do so, the desired velocity profile function is chosen to be dependent on the distance to the geometric reference. Intuitively, if the system is far away from the reference, it slows down until it is close enough to increase the speed. This mapping is regarded as a tuning parameter that the user can tailor. In an illustrative manner, we designed three variants, progressive in red, medium in orange, and conservative in blue. The computed trajectories are depicted at the bottom right part of the slide. Before looking into the results, let's describe the experiment. The task at hand requires traversing a planar sinusoidal curve from a zero velocity pose. At the middle of the navigation, a longitudinal and angular disturbance is introduced. If we compare our method to post-tracking, given in Magenta, two differences can be spotted. First, at the very beginning of the trajectory, the tracking method shows a small deviation from the reference. This is due to the fact that the rigid body initially is standing still and needs to catch up with the moving time reference. In contrast, the presented post-following approach is aware of its initial state and progressively increases its velocity along the reference. Second, as soon as the disturbance is over, the additional degree of freedom inherited from augmenting the system allows all three variants to slow down and converge back to the geometric reference. As expected, the convergence rate directly correlates to how conservative the desired velocity profile mapping is. On the other hand, post-tracking lacks this additional degree of freedom and has no choice but to catch up with the time-based reference causing a large deviation error. This brings us to the end of our presentation. To sum up, in this paper, we have formulated a unit dual quaternion based post following control approach for rigid body dynamics. Initially, we have derived the equations of motion for the full pose error between the rigid body and the geometric reference in the form of a dual quaternion and a dual twist. Subsequently, we have extended the original control, control law to account for nonlinearities arising from the introduction of auxili auxiliary states associated with post following. When doing so, the additional degree of freedom has been designed either to achieve convergence to a desired velocity profile or as a feedback mechanism. On top of that, we have also established almost global asymptotic stability. Lastly, we have numerically validated our findings with two illustrative simulations. With this summary, we finish our presentation. For further details, please check the paper on archive or download the code from GitHub. Thank you very much for your attention.